reacted that react with 25 cm cube of potassium hydroxide can be found by titration using the apparatus as shown a dilute nitric acid is uh, potassium hydroxide with an indicator is there and a dilute nitric acid is added complete a box complete the box to name the apparatus what we call this apparatus what's the name of the apparatus This is a uh, burette. A pipette is having only one marking. So this one is a burette. Then the next question. Name a suitable indicator that could be used. So any suitable indicator. What indicator can be used? There are different types of indicator like methyl orange, phenolphthalein, litmus. Many indicators are there. You can mention any one of them. Example, I mentioned methyl orange here. The next part. A student did the titration. Titration here means I didn't the technique by which we find the uh, concentration or a volume of or basically concentration of unknown solution by the known one. So in titration one, he was uh, getting the volume of nitric acid eighteen point one, then eighteen point nine, eighteen point three, and eighteen point two. Which one of the result is anomalous? Which one is wrong result? Titration number two is a wrong result because that's you can see it's not in the same range. So, titration two. Suggest what might have caused this result to be anomalous. Means why he might add or what could be a reason he added. parallax error normally parallax error does not make too much difference in the value and if it, it was a parallax error then the value can be higher it can be lower yeah he forgot to close the jet or the nozzle that could be the one because He's adding what he is doing. He's adding an acid. So we can use the term he overshoot at end point. Or he use more than twenty five cm cube sodium hydroxide because. Uh, sorry, potassium hydroxide (KOH). So, if we are using uh, greater amount of potassium hydroxide, so he need greater amount of acid for reaction. That might be the reason. Use the other result to calculate the average volume of a nitric acid that reacted with aqueous potassium hydroxide. How to? So, we will not. We will exclude the wrong result. Take an average of eight point one, eight point two, and sorry, eighteen point one, eighteen point two, and eighteen point three. What's the average? So eighteen point two will be average. But why it's of two marks? Because one mark is for the unit centimeter cube. So one mark is for mentioning eighteen. And the second mark is for centimeter cube. The equation for the reaction taking place in a titration is shown: nitric acid plus potassium hydroxide gives potassium nitrate plus water. The student concludes that potassium hydroxide was more concentrated than nitric acid. Like the concentration or the number of the particle of potassium hydroxide. Are in more as compared to number of the particles in nitric acid. So explain whether or not the student. So.
so he was incorrect that's right because you can see the ratio between nitric acid and potassium hydroxide is 1 is to 1 so if ratio is 1 is to 1 if i have 25 cm cube of potassium hydroxide i should use 25 cm cube of nitric acid if they have the same concentration but because a small amount of the formula is concentration is moles divided by volume but for nitric acid we use a smaller volume or less volume volume less than 25 that's why it is more concentrated is it clear this four point so incorrect student suggestion is conclusion is incorrect because small amount of acid is used so when the ratio between the two molecule is same the one which we use a small volume it means it is having a greater concentration the one which we use more volume it means it is having a smaller concentration A student investigated the rate of a reaction between the dilute hydrochloric acid and aqueous sodium sulfate. When these chemicals react, they form a precipitate. Precipitate means when we mix two solution and a solid is formed, we call that precipitate. The formation of this precipitate can be used to show how fast the reaction proceed or how fast the reaction occur. Five experiments were done using the apparatus. so basically what happened when uh, two solution are mixed together this will result in a formation of a solid so as the solid will form the printed text the text will remain at its place but because the light cannot pass through this solution so that it appear that the printed printed text is disappeared so experiments are there a large milling cylinder pour 50 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate all these details are there related to the experiments we'll move to the question record the volume of distilled water used in the table and use stop clock diagram to record the result volume of distilled water in experiment 1 how much distilled water was used what is the volume of distilled water used 10 cm cube so if 10 cm cube of distilled water is there 10 cm cube of hydrochloric acid is there and 40 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate so total volume is 60 cm cube so for all the experiments the total volume but this is experiment 1 uh, that the previous was experiment 2 this is experiment 1 50 cm cube of sodium thiosulfate and 10 cm cube of hydrochloric acid but they did not add any distilled water is not added to this one so the volume of distilled water was zero for the first experiment because the total we want 60 cm cube solution for the second one total should be 60 but volume of distilled water hydrochloric and this distilled water is 10 cm cube the third one how much uh, distilled water should be used if 35 cm cube of thiosulfate and 15 cm cube so 35 plus 15 make 50 and uh, sorry 15 cm cube of distilled water then 20 and then 40 so it is mentioned in the question the first experiment it is 0 second experiment 10 then 15 20 and 40 so the first experiment it was 0 then second experiment was 10 then 15 then 20 and then 40 each experiment 10 cm cube of hydrochloric acid was used the main reactant are thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid which result in a formation of a sulfur which will make this text disappear 
what is the time interval the first time interval outside is for second and inner one is for minute how many seconds it is 27 seconds because if i zoom in so the first one is 27 then 45 after 45 66 and then 100 the last one is 201 so we have these values we have to plot a graph using these values 27 33 45 66 and 201 10 15 20 and 40 plot the result from experiment to experiment 5 and draw a smooth line so first the volume is zero uh, this is the volume of thiosulfate okay uh, that's the volume of thiosulfate so volume of thiosulfate for first experiment was 50 so basically what happened we'll have this kind of pattern or if volume of thiosulfate is 10 the time was 201 so at 10 i'm roughly sketching this each box is representing 3 so two uh, this will be seven boxes that after 180 so that will be 201 so when we plot this result when volume of thiosulfate added is 20 you can see this when the volume uh, not 20 volume is 30 it was taking 66 so somewhat this type of a graph we will have in which it shows that if volume of thiosulfate is increasing because the rate of the reaction or concentration uh, like amount of the particle or number of particle increase that is why the cross will disappear in a short time when it is 50 it was 27 so means it the starting point will be 201 and the end point will be 27 so three, one box because each box is representing 3 and starting is so it will be somewhat like this and then the next part from your graph deduce the time taken for the printed word to disappear from if experiment 2 was repeated 20 cm cube of thiosulfate so if you use 20 cm cube of thiosulfate so what how much time it will take to disappear we'll just draw a line and with reference to that volume of thiosulfate you will know how much time it will disappear but because this graph is not accurate this is just approximation to show a shape that of a graph that will appear when you plot this result so show clearly on the grid how you work your out your answer so you have to draw these lines 
then rate of a reaction can be calculated by using equation rate is equals to 1 over time calculate the rate of a uh, reaction using your answer in c1 so our answer in c1 like we will have the time interval example we need like the time interval is there it can be any number say i'm taking 90 so if this answer was 90 then one over time taken so one divided by 90 we'll get the rate of the reaction Zero point zero one. Next one. In which experiment, one, two, three, four, five was the rate of a reaction greatest? Which experiment the reaction was faster? Experiment one, two, three, four, or five? The cross was disappearing in twenty-seven second. So in experiment one, it was taking a short time to disappear, so the reaction was. much faster as compared to any other experiments then in terms of particle why the rate of reaction was greatest in experiment 1 so what is the reason why the reaction was faster in terms of particle basically more particles so more chance of collision or greater number of collision first thing you will mention it will have greater number of particles so greater chance of collision or successful collision that also it's the right thing give a name of more accurate piece of apparatus for measuring a volumes of measuring uh, the other than measuring cylinder so what else can be used to measure the volume instead of using a measuring cylinder so burette or pipette p i p e w t e so burette or pipette can be used any one of them you will write not both suggest the effect on the result using a 100 cm cube conical flask instead of 250 cm cube conical flask means what will happen if i use a 100 cm cube conical flask so solution will have more depth but if i use 250 cm cube flask the solution which is inside the flask will have a smaller depth so smaller depth this will have more depth so which one you think the cross will disappear faster in 100 cm cube or 250 cm cube this is a 100 cm cube flask conical flask and this is a 250 cm cube conical flask there's a cross there's a text underneath which cross will disappear faster in which case the cross will disappear faster in 100 cm cube the cross will disappear faster because what happened this is having greater solution depth of the solution so when the solid is formed greater depth of a solid so you are not able to see through it but in 250 cm cube is still because smaller depth so you are able to see through it so it suggests the effect on the result using a 100 cm cube so the text will disappear faster and what is the reason because greater depth so you won't be able to see the cross easily a sketch on the grid the graph you expect if all experiment were repeated at a lower temperature so 
if all experiments were repeated at a lower temperature it will take more time like if this was your original graph of the experimental result this was a first graph for disappearance of the cross then the cross the same it will not intersect it will take more time for disappear so two graphs the smooth curves you will draw this is at a low temperature because at a low temperature the action rate will be slower so it will take more time for cross to disappear okay in the next question two two substances solution a and b were analyzed test on solution a some of the test and observations are shown test on solution a solution a was divided into three equal portion in a test tube a ph of the first portion of solution a ph is 1 it means it is a strong acid then magnesium ribbon was added to the second portion effervescence and a gas produced so lighted splint pop it it means that ph1 is showing that it was acid and the gas which is given off is a hydrogen gas test 3 dilute nitric acid followed by a barium nitrate white precipitate this is a test for sulfate ion so this test confirmed that there is a sulfate ion present so which identify the gas produced in test 2 which gas is given off in this test hydrogen is a gas which is given off hydrogen gas is there not nitric is not a gas hydrogen gas is there then the second part identify solution a first thing the first test confirm that this is acid a strong acid the second test also confirm it's an acid the third test white precipitate this is a test for sulfate which acid contain a sulfate ion so sulfuric acid contain a sulfate ion that's why this is a sulfuric acid it's not a nitric acid why because the the test for nitrate is adding sodium hydroxide and aluminum powder and then heat that's the test for nitrate but it's not a test for nitrate this is test for sulfate which confirm sulfate ion is present and the acid which contains sulfate ion is sulfuric acid test on solid b a solid b is zinc carbonate so they already give you the identity of solid b nitric acid was added to solid b a gas produced was tested when we add acid to carbonate what we will observe and how we can test the gas given off so will observe bubbles fizz yeah the product is zinc nitrate plus carbon dioxide plus water will be there but we don't have to we have to just write observation so observation will be fizz or bubbles and the gas will turn lime water milky so the lime water will turn milky because of this gas zinc nitrate solution is formed in test c was divided like basically because what we add we add a nitric acid so it it will form zinc nitrate so this zinc nitrate now we have a zinc nitrate and this zinc nitrate we add sodium hydroxide drops of sodium hydroxide what is the observation when when we add sodium hydroxide small amount observation when small amount of sodium hydroxide is added it will give us a white ppt 
or white precipitate. So observation will be white PPT. And access, when we add more than enough, what will happen to PPT, dissolve or insoluble? The precipitate dissolve to form a colorless solution. Same thing, if we add aqueous ammonia, what we will observe? White PPT. And if we add an excess of aqueous ammonia, what happened to PPT? Yes, you can write PPT. That's in exam even. It's a correct. Then what happened when we add? So the precipitate dissolve and it will form a colorless solution. The last one is the precipitates will dissolve and form a colorless solution. This is the last question. Uh, just a potassium chloride is a salt that dissolve in water. The solubility means the solubility of a salt is a mass in gram that dissolve in 100 cm cube of uh, water at particular temperature. Plan an investigation to determine the solubility of potassium chloride in water at 40 degrees centigrade. You are provided with potassium chloride and common lab apparatus. So first we'll uh, measure the volume of 100 cm cube of water in a measuring cylinder. That's right. Then. So that's the first point. We are adding a hundred cm cube of water. Then, yeah, we can use a water bath because the water bath can keep the temperature or maintain the temperature of the water. That can be done. So first we'll measure the volume of the water and or we took 100 cm cube of water and we measured by measuring cylinder. Then what we can do, we can heat to 40 degrees and we will add potassium chloride until no more dissolve. We will filter, but we want to find how much yeah, we will filter, but we, and we want to find how much potassium chloride dissolve in this hundred cm cube. So to know the mass, we can also reweight the mixture that can also be done to identify like, but, but for that, you have to mention if you use the term reweight. Yeah, you can compare the initial and the final masses. That's also true. Uh, but if you are mentioning a reweight, then the first point you should include, like measure the volume of 100 cm cube of water in a measuring cylinder and measure the, its weight or measure its mass. And then heat to 40 degree and then add potassium chloride until no more dissolve Then filter to remove and then filter and then you can also reweigh again. 
then compare the masses um reway and mass of kcl is equals to the final mass minus initial mass and then mass divided by volume we will calculate solubility is it clear this experiment in which we have to find there are different ways by which you can carry out this experiment so this this is one of them any doubt in this experiment yeah we will still filter because uh, what we are measuring first why we are filtering because we are finding how much because we need the amount of the salt which is dissolved so what i did i have a measuring cylinder in which i am having 100 cm cube of water i place this on a balance and i will get the mass of the measuring cylinder plus mass of the water inside and then what we did we add a salt but not all of the salt will dissolve some will dissolve at 40 degree and some still like until no more salt dissolve so that until no more salt dissolve so we should filter it because if i measure the mass at this point i will get the mass of total salt which is added but i don't want the mass of the total salt i need the mass of a salt which is dissolved so what i will do i should filter it out first means i should remove this and then after filtration i will reweight again is it clear or what else you can do like you can have a original mass of a salt and then add a salt but that will make it complicated like adding a salt and then filtering it out and taking a difference of the mass of the salt to know how much salt is added or there is also another way what you can do to know the mass of a salt you can evaporate this to dryness like remove all of the water and until the solid is left behind so you can measure the mass of that solid as well so instead of doing this method the last one you like reweighing part what you can do you can also evaporate to dryness until you are left with salt or solid and that solid you can measure the mass is it clear any doubt other than this uh, related to may june 2018 paper 6 variant 1 